Oh hey there, today I'm going to be drilling out all the spot welds that hold on this inner fender as well as this front radiator support. So when it comes to drilling out spot welds, you're going to want to use a spot weld drill bit. But before I can use that, I need to go through with a punch and tap each one to help the bit cut faster. And this really thick undercoating hides all the spot welds. So normally that would mean I'd have to go through with a wire wheel and grind it all off. But since I already drilled out all the spot welds from the Southern truck in a previous episode, I can just use this as a reference. I'm doing all this work to remove these body panels because in the last video of this truck, when I gutted the engine bay, I found that the driver's front corner was in a collision at some point and poorly repaired, which caused a lot of rust. I already had the factory panels left over from the parts truck, so why not replace it all? I had to scrape off all this sealer here because as I learned on the other one, there are one, two, three, four, five, six spot welds underneath there. And there was also some rust hiding down in here. So it's a really good thing I'm doing this. Now, if I go on this edge with my finger, everywhere there's a low spot right here, this one right there. Uh, there's probably one in here somewhere, maybe right there. That's where the spot welds are. Already having done this once before on the parts truck was a huge help because I had those panels to use as a reference to see where the spot welds were hiding. When I was welding on this rocker panel for the parts truck, almost all the spot welds lined up so it made it really easy to get it in the correct position. I think this may already be aftermarket being replaced once in the past because you can see these aren't spot welds, these are actually welder welds and they go all the way across also notice the absence of any seam sealer here and the obvious clue was that these spot welds are not in the exact same position as these spot welds and that just means i'll have to take my time making sure everything is lined up correctly before i weld it in place because of the angle of this fender uh, this kind of humps up here and I don't have enough access to one, hit it straight in with a punch, and two, get a drill in here and drill those spot welds out. So after I get everything else, I'll come back with a sawzall, make a cut right here, and then drill those out and uh, chisel this piece off. Now these first two were actually a little tough to get started because instead of a dimple where there was a spot weld, it was actually domed a little bit from, uh, they must have used a MIG welder. So you saw the drill bit slipping around a little bit on this one. And this one I can go a little bit deeper on. You can see I'm still in the sheet metal of the uh, front support here. Whereas this one is perfect. I went all the way through and you can see the sheet metal for the inner fender underneath. I like to use a drop or two of oil on each spot weld because it helps preserve the life of the drill bit. All right, let's do it in real time so you can see that this is actually not as fast as it looks. Got a little bit of oil on the bit here and there's a spot weld right there. This one had a nice indent on it, so it went really easy at the start. And that's it. So kind of feel it when the bit actually gets through this top layer of metal. It'll sort of uh, grab for a split second. And if you look really close, you can see there's a little bit of a gap right there at the bottom. And that means I've drilled all the way through the outer metal and I haven't drilled into the metal backing it that it's welded to. And that's ideal, that's what you want. Same here, you can actually see the space between them. Up here in this top one, I thought I might've actually drilled through, but if you can see, that's a straight edge. So that's just the inside edge of this inner fender rail. 
But I'm sure I'll drill too far into one of these eventually and then I'll be able to show you what not to do. I did have to remove the undercoating to find these spot welds. Next, I need a hammer and a chisel. Now, my chisel needs to be more like this one where it's really thin and long, not a short fat one like this because I need to actually get in between the two metal panels and pry them apart and chisel out any remaining contact of those spot welds. Start up here at the top. And I've already hit a stubborn one. All right, I'm through one. This cut will help me chisel the spot welds while causing less damage to the surrounding panels. Sometimes I drill the hole a little off center of the spot weld, so one of the edges is still attached. It's easy to break that small section of remaining spot weld by bending the metal back and forth a few times. Okay, I've drilled out all the spot welds that I can easily access on this front passenger corner and also back here where it meets the uh, driver's side of the cab. And as I mentioned before, I can't really get to these spot welds here because I can't really get a drill bit down in there. So what I'm gonna do is cut this right about here and uh, that way I can sort of just bend this out, out of the way, move it, and then have direct access to all the spot welds along this edge. And looking at the other inner fender, it looks like there's gonna be eight of those. The last 
last major thing holding all of this front piece together here is the body mount bolt. So let's take out that body mount bolt or what's left of it. Well, it's no longer 14 millimeter, that's for sure. Now it's about a 13. Let this one soak for a bit. I carefully cut this area with the Dremel instead of the Sawzall because I only wanted to cut through the sheet metal of the inner fender and not any of the structural metal on the other side. And also used the Dremel to cut some of the spot welds that I had drilled off center and then removed any remaining seam sealer joining the two panels I was about to separate. The spot welds were still hanging on somewhere near this bottom area around the body mount bracket. So I finally got this free. And unfortunately, you can see how rusty it is down in there. This section of the inner fender here was just paper thin and you can see it just completely crumpled because it was so rusty. So I either have the option of replacing all this whole section here, which I'm doing over here, which as we found is a lot of work. So I'll probably just go ahead and fabricate that small section uh, at the same time that I replace this rusted out battery tray. So now I'm disconnected here I'm unbolted on both of my front mounts. The last thing holding this whole front section together is this area right here. And the way that actually works is there is a piece of metal that's sandwiched in between these two. So to separate this entire section from the firewall, I'm gonna have to kind of wiggle this up and down while pulling it forward and hope I drilled out all the spot welds completely. As you saw, this whole thing is ready to come out, except for it's still hanging up somewhere, I'm guessing right around in this area. I've drilled out every single spot weld that I can find on the inside and the outside, so I'm guessing it might just be somewhere inside here that the metal is just stuck together a little bit, maybe on the edge of these spot welds. So I'm gonna use this slide hammer with a hook, and I'm gonna hook this right on this lip like this. The exact same thing that I did on the parts truck, and see if I can slam this and pull this forward. Didn't get much there. It actually started to bend this panel out a little bit, but that does ensure me that all of these spot welds here are now completely broken and free. So I'm guessing it's hanging up somewhere on these guys. And this bottom one is definitely broken. The middle one looks pretty good. And I actually drilled through in this top one because I was unsure about it. But maybe it's still a little bit attached over here on this side. I can't see an actual clean break between those two pieces of metal. I'm gonna ream the hole a little bit and see if I can pop that loose. I went back and drilled these spot welds with a larger drill bit just to make sure they were completely separated. And the panel still wasn't budging at all. So 
I decided I'd take a look inside and see if I was missing something that I didn't notice before. So my plan now is if I can get the slide hammer hooked around right here, maybe I could just yank this outward to separate it from the inner piece. Okay, I can confirm that these spot wells are definitely broken. You can see all the way through there. Uh, I pulled this up as well. I made sure there's no other ones under here, which wasn't on the other truck either. But now I'm thinking maybe it's this one here that I was so sure that I already broke completely. So let's try that next. I think that was it. I saw a lot of, saw a lot of movement there. so close to coming off. We're still stuck somewhere right in here though. And I know that because as I'm lifting this whole piece up, this is moving too with it. It's hanging on by a string here. Right here. Go. Got that broken off, and I think we're ready. Now, for the moment of truth, you're gonna finally pull this front piece off. Oh, it's ready. That's all it was. A couple spot welds. Now, with this out of the way, I can get to this little tiny strip of the inner fender. It starts right here, goes over here, spot weld, 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 and get in here at an angle and drill those out, remove this little strip, and then looking over here at the new fender, you can see it's already in place, and I'll be able to line everything up. Done. Next, I'm gonna have to spend some time on this firewall, cleaning up all this rust, including some of these thin areas where it actually broke through. And this front inner fender is gonna need some attention as well. Uh, now is the ideal time to go ahead and drill out the spot welds for this battery tray, get that replaced. And of course, that's paper thin down in there. Might as well fix that while the battery tray is out. And of course, down here where it was all paper thin is gonna need rebuilt back up as well. And then welding in this inner fender and this radiator support from the Southern Parts truck. This thing has been a lot more work than I expected, but uh, that's what you get when you try and save a $600 Ohio Toyota. Thanks for watching.